friends, I've got another story for you. I love this story. This is called The Legend of the Christmas Stocking, the inspirational story of a wish come true. Written by Rick Osborne, illustrated by Jim Griffin. Look at that wonderful cover. This book has beautiful illustrations. this title page it's two pages wide the legend of the Christmas stocking written by Rick Osborne illustrated by Jim Griffin I think you're gonna like this story do you hang Christmas stockings at your house at Christmas time we do New York Evening Post get it here Peter waved his last newspaper read all about it Pirates on the high seas. A stagecoach rolled up and stopped. A man leaned out and said, I'll take that, Peter. Any word about your father? No, sir, but we expect his ship to return soon. Peter thanked the man, put the coins in his pocket, and started to run. He had an important stop to make before going home. Where do you think he's going to go? Peter stopped in front of a small shop, slicked back his hair, and stomped the frozen snow off his boots. A sign hanging above the window of the store read, Everything Wood. Peter looked inside, and his heart sank. Busting in the store, he said, Mr. Dewey, where is it? You didn't sell it, did you? I wonder what he's worried about. Jim Dewey looked up and laughed. The woodworker was a longtime family friend. He was old enough to be Peter's grandfather, but his cheery smile made him seem a lot younger. Slow down, Pete. You know you can call me Uncle Jim. Sorry, Uncle Jim. I was just worried. So where is the ship? Uncle Jim brushed wood shavings from his leather apron. Reaching up to a top shelf, he took down a big model ship. He carefully set it on the wooden counter. Peter sucked in his breath. This is an exact copy of the USS Constitution, the pride of the squadron. It, it's a three-masted, 204-foot frigate. It's almost identical to the one your dad is sailing on. You didn't really think I would sell it to someone else, did you, Uncle Jim teased? I didn't know. Why did you take it out of the window and hang up some old socks instead? Uncle Jim laughed. The stockings are for Christmas presents. Who'd want socks for Christmas, Peter asked. Not as a present. They hold presents. You know, lemon drops for your sisters, chocolates for your mother, Jim said. Peter gave Jim a funny smile. I don't know if I'd want lemon drops after they've been in one of my socks. And this schooner would never fit. Peter, Jim said slowly, what will you do if your dad doesn't get home in time for Christmas? Will you be willing to use the money you've saved for this ship to buy Christmas presents for your family? Peter swallowed hard. My dad will be back. I hope so, Uncle Jim said, reaching for his coat. Would you like a ride home? It's a long way in the snow. And Peter nodded. Peter's mother looked up from her sewing just as he carried a load of wood through the kitchen door. How did you do today, son? Sold every paper, except yours, of course. Everyone knows we're waiting for Dad to come home, so they all buy papers from me. Peter set down the wood just as his youngest sister, Patricia, skidded through the room and hugged him. He smelled the beef stew that his sister, Krista, was cooking for him. After putting two coins into his pouch, he handed the rest of his week's pay to his mother. His stomach growled as he thought about eating the stew.
Mother, any word about Dad? The newspaper says our fleet is having trouble with pirates, asked Peter. It's fine, Peter. I'm sure it's just a bad winter storm, Mother reassured him. Uncle Jim said if Dad doesn't get home in time, I should give you the money. I have to buy gifts for the girls, but I really want that schooner. She sighed. I know, but how would your sisters feel on Christmas morning if you have that beautiful boat and the girls only have an apple and a piece of candy? But I deserve it. I'm the one doing all the work. Dad said if I worked while he was away, I could use some of the money I earned to buy the boat. Peter choked back his tears. I just want him to come home. His mother hugged him. I know. I miss him too. He seems sad. On Sunday, Peter got up early to hitch the horse to the sleigh his dad had built. After breakfast, Peter, Patricia, Krista, and their mother huddled together in the sleigh to go to the church. Inside Brick Church, Peter held Patricia's little hand while they sang hymns. He thought about the schooner so much that he barely knew what he was singing. Peter stared at Pastor Spring's socks, not the ones that Pastor Spring was wearing, but the ones that were tacked up on the front of the pulpit. Pastor Spring took his spot behind the podium. Smiling, he said, for those of you wondering about my socks, don't worry, they're clean. Everyone laughed. Pastor Spring eyes sparkled as he looked around the room. I've hung up my best pair of socks because I want to tell you about the tradition of hanging socks or stockings on the fireplace mantel on Christmas Eve. Perhaps you've already read about the hanging up of socks in Peter's New York Evening Post and Peter grinned. Pastor Spring continued, but where did we ever get such an idea? Let me tell you the story. The church went quiet. Everyone liked Pastor Spring's stories. It started many years ago with a poor man I'll call Stephanus. He was a shoemaker. One day he was putting the final touches on a very fine pair of sandals when the door of his shop squeaked open and a well-dressed young man stepped in. I trust that you and your daughters are well, the young man said. I'm fine, Nicholas, Stephanus replied. I only have one worry in my life. And what is that? Nicholas asked. My daughters want to be married, Stephanus asked. Stephanus said, I don't know if I'll be able to afford three dowries. Hmm, Nicholas said, without the dowry money, your girls can never be married. Is that right? Stephanus nodded his head sadly. God will help, Nicholas told the old man. I hope you're right, Stephanus replied, and Nicholas paid for their shoes and left. A few nights later, Stephanus and his daughters were sitting by the fireplace after dinner when something heavy flew through the open window and landed, clink, on the stone floor. Stephanus and his three daughters gasped. Claudia, the oldest girl, ran to pick it up. Father, someone has, left, someone has given us a bag of gold coins, said Claudia. Now you can be married, Claudia, their father rejoiced. The three sisters laughed and danced around the room. Stephanus ran to the window to see who had been so generous. The street was empty. Soon after Claudia's wedding, a second bag of gold flew through the window and landed, clink, on the floor. It must be for you, Trophina, the youngest daughter Phoebe said. Again, Stephanus looked outside and again he found no one. One damp evening, some time after the second wedding, Phoebe hung her washing around the room to dry. She hung her socks over the fireplace. Would you believe it? 
a third leather pouch filled with gold flew in through the open window. But this time the gold landed into one of Phoebe's stockings. Stephanus rushed out the door and ran after the unknown giver. Stop, he called. Why are you doing this? Then Stephanus saw someone in the darkness and he knew who it was. Nicholas, is that you? Please stop, Nicholas. Nicholas stepped out of the darkness. He wanted his gifts to be a secret. Before my parents died, they gave me three bags of gold. They wanted me to have enough for everything I needed. But when you told me about your daughters, I knew I had to help. But you gave us all three bags of gold and we did nothing to deserve them, Stephanus cried. Nicholas served God, Pastor Spring explained. He understood that God had set the example for giving when he gave his only son, Jesus. None of us deserved to have Jesus die for us. As God gives to us, even when we don't deserve it, giving to others shows God's love. Peter hung his head and thought of his leather pouch of money, and Pastor Spring went on. As the years went by, the story of the gift of gold spread, and people started to hang stockings by the fireplace on a special day each year. Now people here in New York are starting to hang stockings on Christmas Eve. I can't think of a better way to remind us all of God's wonderful gift to us, Jesus. Peter prayed, and he asked God to help him be more generous and whispered aloud, Please bring my dad home safely. What do you think is going to happen? You think Peter is going to share his money? You think his dad's going to make it home in time? I hope so. Let's find out. Every night, Mother secretly sewed special stockings as a surprise for Peter and his sisters. She stitched each child's name along the top. On Christmas morning, Peter watched with joy as his sisters emptied their stockings, giggling and squealing at the contents. Each had an apple, a leather pouch of lemon drops, and a beautiful hand-carved wooden doll. The girls hugged their mother. Give Peter a hug too. He worked very hard to buy us all presents so that we could have a happy Christmas. Peter couldn't stop smiling. What he had done felt so right. He handed his mother a beautifully wrapped package. This is for you, Peter said, and tears filled his mother's eyes as she opened the gift. It was his mother's favorite chocolates, the ones that Peter's dad usually bought for her Christmas. Inside was a small card and it said, I miss him too, Peter. Knock, knock, knock. Peter ran to open the door. There stood Uncle Jim. Merry Christmas, Uncle Jim said, smiling. I brought you something. Then a man stepped out from behind Uncle Jim. Dad! They hugged each other and Peter wouldn't let go. The rest of the family crowded around and joined in the hugging. Later, when everyone was settled around the crackling fire, Dad said to Peter, I was so eager to see you all, I didn't bring my bags inside. Would you go get them out of Jim's wagon? Sure, Dad. Peter ran to the small horse-drawn wagon and stopped dead in his tracks. He started to whoop. There in the wagon was the wooden schooner. It looked even bigger and more beautiful than Peter remembered. His dad walked up and put an arm around Peter. I'm proud of you, son. Peter smiled and thought of how glad he was that the story of the stockings had reminded him of what Christmas is all about. The end. I sure hope you liked that story. Do you think you could try to do something special for others this Christmas season? All right, I'll see you next time.